we start with introductions? Yep, that sounds good. Hi, um, my name is Chrissy Fatch. I'm the director of Equal Do me a favor. Sorry, um, yeah. microphone's in front of you. Uh, Alright, so my name is Chrissy Fatch. I think I have seen all of you in your faces before. Um, I'm part of the project. I'm the director of ecological restoration and wildlife conservancy. Um, my background is in biology and conservation. And the work that, that my department does is really stream restoration and wildlife habitat, uh, working with municipalities and counties and landowners on creating wildlife habitat in urban space. So just as, as a background, then to talk a little bit more about wildlife, uh, but we're here as a partner to defer uh, to provide expertise and we'll go into the details more as we go along. Uh, but then we're the project manager for the project and another partner with Dennis So I'll pass it over to Dennis. So well, Dennis the mayor with the wildlands. Microphone, please. I'm Dennis DeMayer with the Wildlands Conservancy. Um, and, and again, this is our first uh, Department Advisory Committee of the Silk Hill uh, Restoration Project. And uh, we're going to give you an overview and go into details. And uh, as needed, talk about how it fits overall in the Lehigh River Watershed Management Plan and uh, give you some of the details. Jerry from X, we're here with all the chats here just to see if the project goes along kind of like the way we would like to see it done. Jack Kerman, uh, on the uh, Project Advisory Committee. We're just kind of here to represent the uh, concerned citizens of Jim Thorpe. Jessica Crowley, um, Borough Council, on the water chair. I'm Lauren Stringer, I'm the Borough Manager. I'm just here for the first meeting to help you get started here, and then Brooke, the second chair, will be the main point of contact. My case there, Borough Council. Okay, everyone has an agenda, and everyone has an agenda, and um, also um, an overview and, and some of the background information that that we're going to go over. Um, Chrissy, you have to pull the microphone right in front of you and talk directly into it. Okay. Um, That's better. Okay. So our role today with the advisory committee is really bring everyone together from the beginning of the project and work together our community as a group. So we talked a little bit when we met earlier, and this is a project that we want to do this growth project, and we're really interested in engaging everyone with that way. So the questions we'll be talking about uh, that will not be it. And, um, as we get started with the project, and I find that's a benefit, it's going to be good. Uh, but the advisory committee will be meeting now, we'll be meeting with the contractor, uh, we'll be going over the design plans together. So it's a community effort. And I just to yeah, yeah. All right, so what we did was to try to set everything for there to be clear communications on what this project is, how it came about, and the interaction that we're going to have with, with an advisory board to, uh, to give input uh, when the engineering firm is hired and the type of design and a lot of the details. So if we could go through this uh, together, uh, this three-page document. So uh, it's critical that we have uh, clear lines of responsibility and communication throughout the entire conduct of this complex project. Uh, and, and I assume all you, you all know that we received a uh, DEP grant for 200000 we're going to get into it here in this form, but this could be an 800000 to a $1 million project. 
We received the first 200,000 from the EP, and just yesterday, DCNR announced the $65,000 grant to this project. So today, we have awarded 265,000. So the background, the Borough Council is partnering with the Wildlands Conservancy to secure grants to remove the five dams of various size on rural property and restore the stream to its natural configuration and flow. Wildlands and Council signed an MOU to proceed with the project. The MOU outlines specific responsibilities for both parties. Um, I have my copy of the MOU here. Um, it is a, a document approved by Borough Council and I'm sure available uh, to anyone who wants to look at it. Uh, the roles, Jim Crow Borough Council's responsibility. This is a Jim Crow Borough project. Borough Council approves all grant requests and makes all final decisions related to the project. Borough Council's response is the responsible grantee of all approved federal and state grants and is responsible financially for all decisions related to the project. Wildlands Conservancy, as Christian said, is the project manager and the liaison between the engineer, borough council, the state aid, and the state aid agencies. The wildlands will provide the expertise and guidance in the design of the permitting. Wildlands will apply to grants, grant funding on behalf of the borough, and it will assist in managing those awarded grants. The advisory committee, which we are here today for the first meeting, the committee is made up of community residents interested in the project. Meetings will be conducted to inform members on the process of the project. It should be a learning experience for residents to understand the process and ask questions. Wildlands will see input on the sensitivity of the site, design ideas, and how to make the site accessible for residents to enjoy. From this community input, Wildlands and Rural Council will make final decisions along with safety, environmental, and financial considerations based on the funding and project scope of work. Um, why don't we, rather than reading this entire uh, document here, um, let's, let's go to page two and look at page one. Uh, and let me just let me say right up front because I brought a couple of documents here with me to try to set the context of uh, council talking to us about these uh, these dams that are no longer uh, needed and used. And I brought along with me the county comprehensive plan and roadway plan, which mentions working with uh, municipal water authorities and uh, the importance of the value of the land that the borough has in this, I believe, 90 acres uh, along the still of Illinois. But I really want to highlight for you why Wildlands is here and why we do this. In 2003, almost 20 years ago, the Lehigh River Watershed Conservation Management Center was developed with Wildlands, the state, and the county of Florida. And the plan of holding here was updated in 2018. And there are uh, four chapters, and there are 10 major goals of each chapter. Basically, this is the guide for what Wildlands is doing in, in the watershed. And under waterway restoration and recommendations, the first point is remove obsolete dams. Promote the benefit of dam removal. Restore migratory fish passage from the Delaware and the Lehigh River. So in this plan, which is on our website, is the list of all of the 270 dams in the watershed. The old industrial dams or water authority dams that are no longer needed. So uh, again, we did next year. 50 years Wildlands Conservancy is in business. And this, this has been our guide. Um, there are uh, documented dams. There are more than 130 state documented dams in the Agri watershed. And there are at least the same number that are undocumented. Most of these dams are remnants from the previous 
increased investment in transportation use for both mills and dams and no longer served their original purpose. Due to the number of obsolete dams, likely to look rebuilding after removal and, and a tendency to produce near the median of dramatic improvements, removing dams is a very good swing restoration strategy. Usually the largest uh, impediment to removal of obsolete dams is the fact that the dam owner or the community we, uh, residents remain sentimentally attached to them, commonly held but false notions that a dam project in stream water supply during low fall flow conditions and in some way mitigate flooding are additional barriers to removal. Never removal projects need to account for and address these types of community concerns if they are being to be successful. And so I'm not going to continue on this picture here in the plan, but I we just want everyone to know on the um, because of some of the past comments that this this is our time. This is why we're here. This is what we do. And when the world came to us with this issue, we offered the help and, and this is where we're at today. So I'm we will begin to design uh, the, we will begin the RFP process to hire an engineering firm that has a disability, that has an experience in removing old dam structures and restoring streams. So it's somewhat of a unique type of uh, contract by the assembly. So phase one was designed for early to be completed by December 2023. The estimated cost was 65000 and as I, as I just mentioned, we've got the DEP grant, and we asked for a companion DCMR grant, and we received that. It was just announced by yesterday. Last night, yeah, after, after working hours, actually. Yeah. Phase two is the construction of dam removals and stream restoration and planning is estimated completion 2025, qualified cost of half a million dollars. Grants we have to be applied for. Um, so again, we're having the first meeting with the advisory committee, initial meetings to introduce projects to partners, talk about the project process and timeline, and educate about the process and scope of work. Um, I think that's that's pretty much we wanted to put this together so that there would be clear communication. And I hope that even though know, we've got the TV station here with a lot of microphones, let's keep this informal. Let's we're here to share and we're here to interact and we're here to educate and we're all here to learn. So um, if we could somehow take a bit of uh, the formality out of this and just have this interaction as an advisory committee and please ask questions uh, along the way. Um, on the agenda, I think we, uh, are there any questions of what, what we've shared so far? I have quite a few questions, but I can wait until you're done with your presentation or as you already answered one of them, which was, about the contractors and how we, the engineers and how we hire them. Um, so I'm not sure what else is going to come up in the conversation, but if, when you're finished, if you want to leave the floor open for questions, very good, I do have questions. Okay. Um, Christy, do you want to uh, talk about examples of other, just to give a little bit more of a background? So this is one of the many projects that we currently are working on as part of this Peralta and River Community and I wanted to give some examples because we do have a couple sites up in this area where we're working with uh, the we're working with the state and with the PCNR and we're working with the uh, Green Commission where we're on the state game on one forty five. And each each site, as you know, launched three at a game, each site is different. 
Uh, but I'm, I tried to pick ones that were similar to, and in a similar state. Um, I just made it for copy. So this is the one on the front page. Is in the one, and that is part of the Pythagoras state. It's owned by the students, and this is a, a similar type of partner for. In this way, the partnership is that DC Nama can assist with the engineering of the baby to help with the project management and the funds for construction. So we apply for grant funds on their behalf. They are in the process of developing the design. And you can see from, from the picture, it's, it's right next to their, their parking lot. It's actually right by the back door of access. Safety wise is, is a concern because the, when there's inspections done at the state, they're looking at how the land is holding up. And in this case, you can see that the lay of the concrete at work. Um, and over time, you know, one, it's really not up to any code, and uh, it is an issue being like right by access uh, of, the, of, the, of the safety issue. On the flip side, it's also uh, following the conservation management plan. It's impacting wetlands and the, the water quality of the habitat that you would have instead of it being that reservoir of water, not reservoir of water, but the city stagnant pool of water. What it will be in the future is more of your springs and uh, cold water that's going to be needed for the water. So that's the goal here is having the, the spring connect to the river instead of having this pool. Uh, the timeline is fairly similar. Right now we're waiting on, on funds for the construction as I mentioned. We should hear that over the time. Um, but that's that's the way we're we're always we're always partnering with others that they're bringing uh, either as a landowner or they can provide engineer services to the state. And that's something where we're all working together to, to benefit the environment. If you flip over the other page, uh, that's on um, state and municipalities. That's on Hill Down Creek. It's a tributary to uh, Mud Run, and it's in the uh, Township. Uh, that's that's one of the general that used to be a USGS page. That's no longer it's no longer functioning. So right now you can see the the concrete on the on the screen that's it's about three feet high. So trial that we, we did a fish survey with the game commission and then the trout that they found in one section, beautiful native trout. They can't they couldn't get upstream because of the dam. So the surveys that were done on the fish surveys upstream, we didn't have the populations that we did downstream. So this is one that is also um, it's in the design plan is we do have the construction done there. This is something where the game commission is assisting with the engineers when they are developing the, the design plan as a landowner. So again, that whole partnership of looking at um, looking at um, what it could be. It could be a beautiful spot for fishing, but right now upstream, you're not getting near as much of the populations of trout and the species that we used to normally have because the river is reconnecting with the people. So I think the last important thing for uh, this uh, initial kick off here presentation. Obviously on phase one is the design and permitting. So um, the process for contracting with the engineer. If you could just talk about that a little bit. So now we're at the point, as I mentioned in phase one, we have the DPP funding and the DCR funding. So that's all we need for design and permitting, following the permit waiver requirements, which are so for any activity in the stream, there's a type of permit that they have to follow. For dams, it's, a, it's reviewed by the state and it's called a chapter 105 permit waiver. So, and there's a specific scope of work to follow for that permit waiver process. So in the design and permitting permit waiver process, um, we would be having the list of, we would do an RFP. So a request for proposal would then as mentioned having qualified engineers that have done this work before in Pennsylvania, have worked with the state, have a good partnership with the state, um, that have given them to have successful partners in the past. Um, and, and you could be 
freshman year overall. If anyone has any recommendations for engineers, or more than they can put their names in and we can make sure that they meet all the requirements, right? Right, right. So we'll be going through this process way all over time. So if there's a contract that they know or someone who has worked in the world before, as long as they're meeting that criteria of having at least two projects in the state and have had a working relationship with, um, with the state in the current waiver process, that can all check the boxes of, okay, you have the qualifications, we know that you have the experience to do this correctly. Will we have a list of potential engineering firms that, which is obviously legal and legitimate to do that, that you send the RFPs to these firms, there's a notice sent out, but there may be three or four or five firms that we've worked with in the past that to let them know the RFP is on the screen. And I have a little stick here, and each, each one of them, again, we've got a qualification. So, in our process, and maybe before that, we partner closely with the state so that we're making sure that we're, that we'll, an engineer's hired, they're following the scope of work that the state is going to be reviewing and they're, they're meeting all the requirements. So what happens is we'll be meeting as a, as a group of the environment committee in place. Uh, so we meet with the staff at TEP, the DNC, who does the I have a couple questions um, that were on here that involved the DEP, so just gonna ask those while we're on the topic of it. The inspection that you're talking about, um, you had emailed the borough, Christy, back in maybe March or April that you were gonna pop by with the DEP for an inspection. Um, Maureen asked you to wait on that. I'm sorry, I can speak louder into the microphone. Is that the inspection that you're talking about now that you're going, that we're gonna do in the fall together as a group, or is that a different inspection? So that's that's the, so it's instead of an inspection, it's um, a field is before the project so that DEP then can give us guidelines on the current labor process. And, and it's really just so that they're familiar with the project before we get started. So did you do that field visit yet? No, that will be something that as an advisory committee we will Okay, discuss. and what, but what is the, the, the thing that you wanted to do back in March that you were saying is different? That you didn't do. Oh, so back in March, DEP was out actually at the project with the state of New York. Since, since it was the body, we had planned for the visit to be the first of the same time. And then talking about it, that the advisory committee would want to be part of it. Okay. We only met at the one site. Okay, so you did go meet at the site though, because Maureen asked you not to do that. No, no, no. Not our site. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say. All right. Okay, so we're, so the, just to be clear, so I understand what you emailed us about that site visit, that's the one that we're going to be doing in the fall then as a group. Okay. And when you say the state, are you referring to the DEP or is there another state agency? So the DEP has a, they have a division of the state. And in that division of data safety, they review the current waiver. So it's the chapter 115 current waiver. So 
any dam uh, in this, any dam that's going to be removed in the state, get it reviewed by the DEP, by the Division of Dam Safety. So the person responsible for that review process, he will be out here in the fall when we do the review. Okay. The DP, that's what I was trying to. Okay. All right. Um, I have a couple of other questions about the DP here. Um, so all of these permits and things like that, I I do want copies to see what these permits are and everything that's going in. I don't know if everybody's aware of what's going on with the DP right now, but they're like under investigation for issuing fraudulent permits. Um, by bypassing the EPA. So that's another question that I wanted to ask. Are there any other agencies that the DEP has to submit these permits to that might need to clear these before Wildlands and the borough can get them cleared by the DEP that you're, you're aware of? Do you know of any other agencies that so, have to be aware? So the DEP, I'm not familiar with what you mean. I don't think that is anything connected to the safety. Um, there is a division but the usually So a simple question is, does the girl get copies of all submittals? I guess that's really the question, I think. Is yeah, that what you're asking? We can get copies of all submittals. We can get copies of all the paper. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and then let me just say something about that. Because um, we're not part of the next house. You're the borough, you're a municipality in the town of Pennsylvania, and we're working with the state agencies. And we, Christy has done this many times before, and, and, and she will know if something is maybe off a little bit. But we need you all to know we're not the state of police, we're not the attorney general's office, and we're not, we deal in good faith with these state agencies who have checks and balances and requirements. So we don't, we don't play any role with that. Just want that to be clear. Assume with um, you know the borough will have files, you'll have copies of everything, every little step of the way, you'll have copies, you'll be able to create a file system for based on the categories that are gonna roll out here with this project. And on, on top of that, because there's a lot of layers of review, all of our all of the funding grants, so these are they're going to need to review the design plans, they're going to need to make sure that everything is you know, done correctly because they're supported by it, they're funded by it, they want to make sure that it's successful. So there's that screening as well. Um, I have some questions about the memorandum. There is a part in the contract that talks about an in-kind match. Um, to me, it looks like you're asking the community to do free manual labor. Can you just explain that better if I have a misunderstanding for what that is? So, yeah. in every, in every part, I, let me well, first of all, we're not asking the community to do anything. So, let me just put that to bed now. Okay. We'll explain to you what in common means. Well, when, when Christy gave the example of other animals where other 
citizens have done that is that farms have contributed all the rights to the world, obviously, is, is, is a total partnership and cooperation. But the time spent by the borough staff is, you know, by an hourly rate is estimated, and that is what is considered the time contribution. In other words, the time is spent that the staff, the paid staff is spending on the project is considered the time contribution. So it just has to do with the staff, not the residents. So it just has to do with the staff, not the residents. So I didn't hear because it got a little too on the I'm not sure if I didn't get free labor or something from the labor. This is all, when we're doing a project, the community gets to be involved. And there's always a point where they're asking, well, how do we participate in it? Maybe it's an advisory committee, but they're not advising the community to be involved. Just involved because they love the site or they're a community member, maybe it's a scout group, whatever. Uh, so our opportunity is you know, there's not really an opportunity for construction because that's a safety issue. But if the community wants to come together, have a volunteer planning together, we can certainly do that. And then any time that they would be involved in that, we show that as uh, as a time. So any any time at all, you know, our time here, it's says that Wildlands will provide a narrative for press releases as needed. Can you explain what that means? Okay, we're doing a project and Wildlands is involved. If there's word that goes out that there's information that needs to be shared and that there's a public interest in the public, there's a community who wants to know the project, why they're doing a project. So what we typically do is partner with the landowner and use it as an education opportunity. Wherever that might be helpful to help with the narrative or signage or if there's nothing there's nothing tied to that that we're gonna stick with in any way of sharing information with the public. That's just an example of how we've done it in the past. Um, Wildlands Conservancy is a stakeholder of Nestle Water. Can you explain that relationship to us? So we have, we're a nonprofit, and we have corporate donors as well as uh, private donors or local community members uh, that will support the work that they do. So like Nestle Water, it might be another global corporation. There's nothing um, that's, that's typical of a nonprofit that is not a separate agenda of any focus. It doesn't mean that we're parent now. And, you know, we're, we have our mission. Okay, um, so based on your experience with other municipalities, once dams are removed in the creeks, has there been any water bottle companies who applied for permits to install wells in the tributary? Not that I know at all. Not that you know? Okay, so you wouldn't have access to that information. What's that? I said so you wouldn't have access to that information. That's um, not even something you would do. 
consider to or a partner to that's not within the purview of who we are and what we do. So you have mentioned repeatedly in the emails that what you do, you've been doing it for many years. So what Wildlands Conservancy has been around since 1973. Um, I did ask for a full list of work history. I was only given a reference and maybe two projects. So I'm going to ask again for a full list of work history on any of the tributaries or creeks that you've worked on. Um, it's reasonable for me to assume that the work history could go back decades. Is that something that you can give me? So when you ask, I gave references, and all of the references that supported the project. For us to give you a full list of every project that we have done, no, that's not something that, that we would be putting together to report as a project. You know, we, can, we need more, uh, it's something that this is um, our work history for an incredible we've been doing this for so many years. I just, Do you know why I'm asking for the projects? Um, because we can check and see if there has been any problems with the projects at the municipality. We could see if Nestle Water has put any wells shortly after you've done any projects. It's important for the community to have this type of information. They've expressed an interest in it, so I ask. If you're unable to provide that with me, that's okay. There, there is there is absolutely no connection, and I hope going forward, this is about a partnership with the borough. The borough has a situation in their property. My understanding is that the borough didn't want to pay for the dam upkeep. I didn't realize it was a problem. I'm also new, so I wasn't here when this was So let me finish, please. So the, the borough has an issue with with the old uh, um, dams that are no longer needed. And, and we just explain to you who we are and what we do. And it's, uh, you can visit our website and everything. But our, we're doing this out of a pure, 100% pure motive of a stream restoration and an aquatic wildlife of that stream, period. So we feel we're a partner with the borough, and we're doing the borough a great service. If there's anything you're asking, and our time is valuable, so here, if there's anything you're asking us to do that is not in the scope of what we're doing, uh, you, you know, that's just not within the scope or not where what we have time to do. I can also say that that's something that if you're making whatever requirements for us, I think as a, as a group from the borough, that should be something that should be discussed and then brought back to us. You know, if, if we're a partner as a project advisor, as a project manager, if that's the requirement, that should be something that everyone in the borough discusses and make a decision. And then, then that's our decision of are we continuing in production or is this something that's going to take more time? I think we've already, we've already voted on this as a council and we decided to move forward, so we're not going to keep dredging about the same I'll ask, I'll ask whatever what questions. I'll ask you're whatever dredging questions. Dredging out the same accusations. I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking questions and I'll continue to ask questions. And we've already approved the project, so we're here to work Mike, with the wildlife I'm not, I'm, I'm asking we're questions. We're not spending and I'm time rehashing this all the time. I will I'm ask sure. whatever uh, questions. You may, but we're not answering them. Of course you're not going to answer them because you're not the person because it's you irrelevant. to. It's, it's irrelevant. It's very relevant it's to the community. It's irrelevant. We have limited time. Can we yes. move on? As, as a leader, is there any talking about the, the project itself? Is there any other, other questions that we're talking about? I, I do have a question. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is the right time. But we did talk about once the stream restoration takes place, about working on the pathways that are out there to get around. Um, so when you take out the dams, there's a lot of natural rock that's involved. So besides putting it in a stream to make your uh, proper, I don't know it's proper term of that is, but will we be able to use any of the rock for the pathways to kind of keep that historic uh, material? You know, you, you're reading up a excellent point that I think 
this community in Durham and should look at it and, and think about it. Um, and that has to, I, I think the shorter answer is this this is an expensive project, and whatever the scope of the hours of the contract, if we ask it to do something additional, it's going to cost additional dollars. And I know uh, the borough was awarded a grant, right, for the Memorial Park. Is that just, that was just announced. So um, I understand that the property is just a beautiful, amazing property that's been hiked by borough residents.
Tired me all because you don't. 